What's up everybody and welcome to another Gutenberg tutorial. In this video we're going to continue the work that we've been doing on our social row. So now that we are saving the options of what type of social media we want to print, it's time to actually print and then create some UI in order to allow the user to customize the message of follow on Twitter, specify their Twitter account, the YouTube account, whatever they want to let the user do in this custom block. This episode is sponsored by Linode. Linode is the largest independent cloud computing provider, which needs no introduction as it's been around since 2003. That was 18 years ago, and at that time, graphics card looked like this. They're independently owned and founded on a law for Linux, open source technologies, and the community that surrounds them. Linode makes it easy to give your creations their own personal space on the internet. No matter what skill levels you're at, or what technology stack you use, Linode can help your ideas come to life on the web. And it's not like AWS where you need a certificate only to figure out how they name things. Are you looking for a small server for your personal blog, portfolio or game server? Or your business is scaling fast and you're looking for an affordable and reliable solution to serve millions of visitors? Linode has you covered. Their extensive documentation is filled with guides and tutorials to help you get started. And if you run into any trouble, Linode comes with an amazing 24-7 customer support by phone or ticket for everyone. You don't need to be a Platinum member or whatever that means just to get help. Adopting a new service is sometimes scary and filled with uncertainty. That's why Linode is offering $100 60-day credit on your new account just to try it, with no strings attached. Sign up today at linode.com slash or click the link in the description below. Linode. If it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. So first of all, we're saving the account type value of which type of account the user wants to print in this specific row. So we can use a very simple condition to print different UI or different sections based on the type of account selected. And in order to do that, we could basically write some very simple JavaScript, something like if attributes account type it's equal to Twitter, something like that, but it doesn't look nice, right? It's kind of weird that we got some errors because uh, React is kind of finicky with their syntax. There's a, a way cleaner approach that we can use by using a ternary operator. A ternary operator is basically writing something like this. This is a simple condition. If condition, execution, or else do something else. A ternary operator allows us to do something like that. Condition, question mark, first execution, or if it's false, it does the second execution. So these and these are exactly identical. But we have another approach, which is a shorthand ternary operator. And a shorthand ternary operator, it's even better because it allows us to do something like, if this condition is through, execute this. Otherwise, don't do anything else. In this case, React allows us to use the ternary shorthand operator by doing if, if this condition is true, double ampersand execution, or we can print whatever, whatever we want. So basically this, it's kind of exactly like this, but only takes care of if the condition is true, we just print this. We don't care about the else or if the condition is not true. So we can use this approach to shorthand our condition and write something way cleaner to maintain. So in this case, we can simply write if attributes account type is identical to Twitter, double ampersand, open the parentheses. Let's print something just to see if our code works. So in this case, I want to use the dash icon which is a component that is part of WordPress and the dash icons of WordPress are all the icons that are uh, used inside WordPress and luckily are also available inside Gutenberg because uh, we can use these built-in icons. Of course, we need to import these specific components because it's not available by default inside Gutenberg, but we can tap it from the WordPress components. So let's put comma here, dash icons, imported from the WordPress components. We can do exactly the same for all the other accounts type that we're specifying. So in this tweet, uh, we leave the Twitter icon, but if this is YouTube, 
we want to print the dash icon YouTube. Perfect. Let's always remember to run npm start in order to compile all our source files. Then let's open our post editor. Let's refresh and let's add our custom block. We already have the Twitter icon because the default is Twitter. If we change to YouTube, we get the YouTube icon. If we change tweet, we get a Twitter icon and so on. So now that we have this very simple condition in place, we can print whatever HTML we want. We can print uh, a label, we can print an input field, we can print a, a button, a call to action, whatever we want. And we can customize, fully customize this section the way we want. And of course we can have multiple variations. So we can have the first one, it's Twitter, second one that it's uh, subscribed to YouTube and the third one that share a tweet. And then now we have all our call to action. Of course, you can add more social media with all the call to action that you want, but that's up to you. I'm just giving you an overview on how to do it. So let's continue this work. So now that we had this little simple condition here, we can continue and I'm going to start tackling the Twitter account and we can do a bunch of very simple things. So first of all, in the Twitter account, we want to allow the user to specify a follow up or a follow a specific Twitter account. So we need two fields. We need one field to allow the user to write whatever button call to action text they want to write. So in this case as follow me in Twitter or check out my Twitter account or follow my Twitter account, something like that. And then the second field should be the actual Twitter account name. And we don't want the full URL. We just want to give the users the ability to write the account name. Then we're going to generate that URL on ourselves. We don't want any URL printed there. So we can also do some sort of sanitization and be sure that no sketchy things are written in that button. So let's go here. First of all, because of the very own nature of this thing, we need to wrap, since we're going to use multiple elements, we need to wrap everything around the same element because we can print only one element at once. So if we need multiple elements, multiple HTML elements needs to be wrapped around one single container. So I want to use the plain text component in order to just give very simple input field without any control, any rich editing options, just to write some very simple things. And I can import this from the block editor. So I can write plain text. And here we scroll all the way down here. I can open the plain text element, which is self-closing. And here I can specify a bunch of things. So first of all, let's specify a placeholder. And the placeholder is going to say something. Uh, follow me on Twitter. But you can write whatever. The value that is going to hold is the actual attributes Twitter text. Because we know inside our attributes object that we specify here, we have the Twitter object. The Twitter object has two attributes in the default object, the text and the account. As I said, the text is going to be something like follow me on Twitter, the call to action. The account is going to actually hold the account name that we're going to link to that specific text. So in this case, this first one is follow me on Twitter. The value is attributes is the Twitter text attribute. And then on change, whenever the user types something, we need to do something a little bit more interesting here. Actually, if I specify on change inside the plain text will be better. So here we can use the usual arrow function to return the value. And we can also use the set attributes. But unfortunately, set attributes doesn't allow us to update directly an attributes inside an object. So we are inside the attributes with set attributes. The tweeter attribute is not a string it's not an integer, it's not a boolean, it's an object in itself. And we don't want to update the whole Twitter attribute, the whole Twitter object. We just want to update the text attribute of the Twitter object. But set attributes doesn't allow us to do something like Twitter text equal value. See, we got an error here because this expression is not allowed. What we need to do, we need to update the whole object, but we need to maintain whatever text it's inside there. So we don't want to update the account attribute of the Twitter object. We want to just update the text attribute of the Twitter object. In order to do that, we need to pass to the whole Twitter object, a new object, which only the updated values that we care about. And in order to do that, we can use the spread function. With the spread function, we can pass the object that we want, and then we can update the value that we need. 
So this might look a little bit confusing, but it's actually really simple. It's like we're doing something, let new object, it's equal to the object assign, create a new object with an empty object, then the attributes, Twitter object, and then let's update the value of the text value with the value that the user typed. So here we are creating a new object and we are assigning the object to an existing, these, this should be attributes, sorry. We're assigning this new object with the existing attributes object, the attributes Twitter object, but we're updating just the text value. Instead of doing these, that is very verbose, we can use the spread function. The spread function is basically spreads the content of that object inside this new object, inside the curly brackets. So this new object is like, creating a new object and spread function to put the existing object inside. And then by specifying the same attribute text by assigning a new value, we are overriding what we're, what it's coming from this Twitter object without affecting the other attributes. We can do exactly the same. So we can duplicate this to tap the account name. So here we can say your Twitter account as a placeholder text instead of the Twitter text, we need to update the account. And also here on change, we set the account by using the spread function. So we maintain without whatever text we updated in the previous plain text object. And here, just to double check, we can do something kind of sketchy, but let's do it anyway. We can print the attributes, Twitter account, and then let's line break this. And then we can print the attributes, Twitter text. So we can see if what we're saving is actually saved correctly and it's printed different. We are not overriding the whole Twitter object, but only the account and the text when needed. So let's update, no building errors. That's good. Let's refresh this page. Let's add our plugin here, nothing it's printed. You can see because I have the follow on Twitter selected, I have the tweet dash icon. Then I have a couple of input fields. These are the plain text that I'm using, these are the placeholder. If I change, of course it's different. I don't have anything for YouTube or tweet, but only on Twitter. If I write, follow me on Twitter, it appears here. And if I write my account is Alecad, there you go. Now what I'm writing in the input field, it's saved here and my Twitter object in the list of attributes, it's saved correctly. And I'm not interfering with another value or the same value of the attributes of that object. That's perfect. So why don't you try to populate in a similar way the tweet and the YouTube with the field that you want. In the next lesson, we're gonna continue doing this, but we're gonna also add some custom CSS to properly style these block because it doesn't really look good in this state, right? It's very confusing and it's not really usable. So we're gonna do that in the next lesson. Well, thank you so much for watching. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And until the next one, as usual, happy coding.